Hey guys, let's talk about the Orange Pi Zero 2. So this, this is what's inside this box. Um, I actually ordered this uh, quite a while back, but haven't gotten around to uh, looking at it or doing anything with it yet. So I now have an SD card with Ubuntu on it ready to go. So we're gonna test this out in a little bit, but first let's take it out of the box and, and see what we have here. So um, here we have the expansion board and here we have the Orange Pi itself. So let's see, and it comes with this little paper. All right, nothing important there. And that's it. So two, two separate boxes. Um, one box comes with the uh, orange pie itself. All right, so let's open this up. And so this is relatively small. Now, supposedly this is vaguely similar in size to uh, Raspberry Pi 3A and similar in power. But uh, this is it right here. Um, comes with an antenna attached. So you could, you could actually attach an even better antenna if you would want. So this is great for Wi-Fi purposes. Um, you can see here, attaches to this little little thing here. Um, we're gonna go over the rest of this in detail, a, a little bit more detail. So that's pretty neat, external antenna. Um, comes with ethernet. Um, actually, hold on, Let, let's, you know what? Let's open this first. Let's open the expansion board. So I purchased the gig, the, the model with a gig of RAM and with this expansion board. So it comes with um, you know he headphone jack and a couple more USB ports, which is kind of nice. And that would attach on here, which we'll take a look at in a sec. All right, so this is it. <clears throat> we've got um, you know we've got a gigabit Ethernet port and um, USB C for I believe for, yeah for power um, micro HDMI. And let's see, one USB port here. So single USB port, um, micro HDMI, and USB-C for power. Gigabit Ethernet. Um, this little board right here is the Ethernet chip, if you can see that. It's a Realtek, it looks like. And um, this is going to be the Wi-Fi chip and Bluetooth right here. Um, we have a 13-pin function interface right here. And um, <clears throat> we have the, uh, so this is going to be USB 2.0. Um, we're going to have a debug TTL UART port here, 26-pin um, header here. Um, we, we have our RAM here. So these two chips are the RAM. And this is going to be the system on a chip right here. So as you, you can see, it's a H616. And that is an all-winner. ARM and it has an ARM Cortex A53 quad core CPU in it. It's 64 bits and runs at 1.5 gigahertz. And um, what else here? Oh, so I should point out that these uh, these pins allow you to attach um, allow you to attach earphones uh, to USB 2.0 TV out and IR receiver. Um, the Wi-Fi chip is supposedly dual band and. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, what else could we say about this? Um, let's see, SPI flash, two megs of S SPI flash, and your micro SD card goes in here. So there's that. Now, um, and obviously this gives you two more USB ports and uh, the headphone jack that we talked about. So let's try connecting this on here. And I'm gonna be attempting to power this up in just a little bit. So this did not come with a power adapter but I should have one on hand so that should be no problem um, I actually have uh, for this video I'm going to I, I have some spares but for this video I'm probably going to be using um, I have this power adapter from my Raspberry Pi 400 here that I'm going to uh, I'm gonna probably just use this to power this for now until I get it its own dedicated uh, charger but this did not come with a, a charger or anything for power but it just takes USB-C um, so we're gonna get this set up with a um, with a keyboard and monitor in just a second <clears throat> um, let, let's throw this uh, let's stick the SD card in here for now so I just got a Samsung 8 gigabyte SD card with and I installed Ubuntu on it if you go to the Orange Pi website they have different images designed for the Orange Pi you can get Ubuntu Android and Debian and um, you download it from them and it should have support on it. All right, there we go. And you can see here, I guess on the sticker, it's gonna tell you it's the Pi Zero 
Orange Pi Zero to one gigabyte. So it's the one gigabyte version, and this is what it looks like on the front with the expansion port on it. Um, so this has a smaller footprint. It's a, it's a relatively small square, almost square footprint, but it gets, uh, you know, once you put this expansion board, it grows in this direction. So anyways, there's that. If you want to know where you can pick this up, you can actually, uh, you, you can check the link in the description. I'm going to try to put a link to Amazon, if not somewhere else on, on there. And you can buy it there. I believe AliExpress also has it. So AliExpress or Amazon are, are places where you can pick this up. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to at least one of those probably. Um, so let's cut over to getting this thing plugged in. All right, so this is it. I plugged it in. Um, let's, let's move this back a little bit here. All right, so this thing already started booting up almost right away. So there's no power button, I don't think. On this, maybe there's a switch that I'm missing, but this is it. All right, so here we go. Orange Pi has booted up. All right, so let me move this back. All right, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna lift up my tripod for a second just to get a view of the whole area. Now my desk is a little bit messy here. This is just my, you know, testing workspace. Connected this temporary keyboard monitor. Here's our Orange Pi, and this is the Ubuntu desktop running Orange Pi. So this is actually pretty neat. Um, and this is a nice, uh, looks like it's going to be a nice smooth Ubuntu experience here. So, um, yeah, that is pretty cool. I just plugged it right in and while I was getting, it already just started booting up. So no, no issue. It just started booting pretty quickly. And, um, let's see if I can zoom out and get this right. Cause I don't, I don't have cat screen capture software on this system yet. All right, so this is about the best angle I could get. Now, what you see on the screen, what the camera does is it actually kind of distorts the image of whatever's on the screen. So you'll see some kind of waves on it, but that's not actually what it looks like with my eyes. It looks a little bit, a lot smoother. Still, this is coming out pretty good for, for something that I'm recording with a camera. Uh, and there you go, when I focus on the screen, it actually gets a little bit distorted again. Should look better if I were using screen capture software. But anyways, let's jump into this now. Um, Oh, you know what? I actually did not even connect the keyboard. So let, let's try connecting our keyboard and uh, mouse to this. So this currently, and there you go. So this currently has, um, there we go. Let's see if this just works by default. doesn't seem to want to. All right, that's kind of unfortunate. Let's move, get a mouse back here. All right, okay, the mouse is working. All right, that, that works just fine. Um, I guess, all right, so I can switch desktops. That's pretty neat. Um, click on applications. So it seems pretty smooth. Um, the Windows, okay, so just the Windows button isn't doing anything. All right, let's say if we run a terminal emulator. Okay, comes up, uh, nice uh, theme by default here. Um, so keyboard is working totally fine. All right. <clears throat> um, free dash M. <clears throat> so we can see we have a gig of Ram, um, DF dash H. So yeah, we can, we can see we have our eight gig drive right there. Um, <clears throat> what else? U name dash A. We can see orange Pi zero. Um, ARCH64. So Orange Pi Zero is the name. Um, uptime, you can see the load average and stuff. Um, CAT, PROC, CPU info. Now we can see it's, it's quad core, so we can see CPU zero through three. Um, so quad core CPU, 48 BogMips. Um, you can see like the CPU revision and stuff. Um, what else can we see in here? We had extra information. Back when I looked at the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, we had extra information here. Here we're just seeing the info for each CPU. We have, um, so we have this core, core zero, core one, core two, and core three. So there, there are, those are our four cores anyways. Um, what else might we wanna look at? Cat, Etsy, Issue, Orange Pi, running Focal. Um, <clears throat> All right, running Focal. So this is a new Ubuntu distribution, you know, themed and everything for uh, 
for the Orange Pi, so it should have all the software and drivers and everything specifically on here set up to work nicely with the Pi. Um, couple desktops by default. Um, I'm not actually sure offhand what this is supposed to be. If this is like XFCE or a special, specially tuned version of, yeah, XFCE. So we're, we're running XFCE and um, <clears throat> Yeah, so XFCE right here. So we're, we're running XFCE, Ubuntu with XFCE, um, themed for the Orange Pi with, you know, all Orange Pi support and stuff. That is a really cool looking wallpaper too. Let's see if they come up with other wallpapers. Um, let's see, I, I'll, I'll bet they did. Um, no, no, just that one wallpaper, which is fine, I guess. Um, web browser by default. Let's see if it's Firefox or whatever. Um, that's taking a little while to load. You know, this is not gonna be online by default. I probably could have connected this to the network. All right, yeah, so Firefox it takes a little while to load. This is not exactly, you know, a supercharged workstation or anything. It's relatively slow. I mean, running a browser for, for the first time is not gonna be super fast anyways. They're more bloated today than ever, as far as I can tell. So there's, there's that, but this is not a super powerful system. I mean, this is this seems usable as a desktop, just not, you know, far from being ideal, right? I mean, it's it's only a gig of RAM, so how much can you, you know, your tabs and stuff are gonna burn through your RAM pretty quick. Um, let's see what our free-m or free-h. Yeah, so it's us using, all of a sudden it's jumped up to like, uh, you know, 600 megs just to launch Firefox. Um, what, what were we on before? Um, free, yeah, we were using almost 400. I mean, of course, uh, we, we had a, a lot buffered and cached. Um, we, we still have a lot buffered and cached. A anyways, whatever, we, we have plenty of RAM left. It's a gig of RAM, and just launching Firefox by itself didn't eat all our RAM up, but if you, you, you do a lot of web browsing, it is gonna eat some memory for sure. Um, I would like to get this online, probably not for this video. Um, that is neat that they have everything we could want right here. Let's try closing this and relaunching Firefox. So if we relaunch it again, um, hopefully it loads a little faster, maybe not. Okay, that's still slow. Maybe not as slow. All right, right there. Fire so Firefox loaded, took a few seconds. Um, not as fast as we would like it to be, but what are you gonna do? Um, what else? So, hex chat, um, whole side. All right, okay. We have some basic utilities and stuff. Um, view. All right, yeah. Nothing too exciting here, by default. But I imagine you could install pretty much anything you would want. So yeah. So far, my initial impression is that this is pretty neat. I mean, this is this is like a standard um, standard XFCE experience on a lower end machine. Um, look at that. We'll move the window around. It just shows where it's going to go. It doesn't have to repaint the window every time. I mean, mostly everything on this seems to run pretty smoothly. Like this is enough power to run the desktop and stuff. It's it's just going to, when you run specific applications like a browser or, or anything with any, you know, any intensity, it's going to start running slow. So, I mean, you could use this as a really low end desktop, but um, probably not recommended with only a single gig of RAM. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if you wanted uh, an ARM-based desktop, you could get like a Raspberry Pi 4 with like eight gigs of RAM or something. That's probably what you would want to go with. But again, I, I paid very, very little for this. I can't mention the price in the video because I, I have um, affiliate links in the description and you, they just don't want you to like tell the exact price. But, um, you know, if you click the link in the description, you'll, it'll take you to Amazon or wherever else. And, um, you know, where you can check the price and buy it if you want. So if you want to pick this up, check the link in the description. But, um, but yeah, definitely, um, yeah, definitely for the price, this is really good. This, this is pretty cheap. Like this is a whole lot cheaper than a, a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is, of course, it's not the same power, but this is, this is pretty cheap. And I, I picked it up right on Amazon. So it was really convenient to get it. So, I mean, for the price, you're getting something that you could run as a desktop and has all sorts of neat stuff on it. But at the same time, you're probably gonna end up using this as, a, as like a mini server or, or for, you know, electronics projects or a robot or something like that. So you're more likely to use it for something like that, but you could use it for other things too. 
So just, you know, worth being aware of. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Other than that, I think that's everything we want to cover today. Um, hopefully you found this interesting. You might want to give me a thumbs up. If you know something I don't know, definitely leave a comment down below. Any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I want to hear it. So leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. You're going to want to hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss out on some of the stuff we have coming up. We're doing a whole bunch of other um, single board computers, Raspberry Pis, electronics, 3D printing, um, all sorts of neat projects, robots, we're doing robot kits, um, all sorts of stuff from scratch. We do code, servers, systems, um, you know, Python, Java, C++, um, just tons of tech related stuff you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out when we come out with new content. Otherwise, YouTube's probably just not going to let you know. Um, that's it for today, though. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.